let's start the yeah, final lecture. And OK, there are two gifts. So one gift is from my wife. And she got some sweets uh, in the shop in this uh, some town. And so you can take one, not two. <laughs> so yeah, come and take one. So yeah. And I think uh, there are 50 or something. So maybe. <laughs> Just one. <laughs> Take one, not two. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, from my gift. So, meal? Meal. Ah, uh, uh, probably. I'm not so sure. I'm sorry. I do not know. So, yeah. I do not know. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Some Italian person knows, uh, yeah, the ingredients. Uh, maybe Antonio, you know that the ingredients of this they include milk, um, <laughs> so she, she, he cannot <laughs> digest milk. <laughs> so maybe some milk, sweet. Yeah, they include butter, I think. Yeah, they have butter, I think. Yeah, so maybe that's not good for. Okay. So that's a gift from my wife. So she bought, so, okay, take one. Yeah. Okay. And the second gift is uh, from me. <laughs> and so you can use computer books or uh, yeah, tablet or anything, yeah, for the exam. I recommend not to use uh, <laughs> chat GPT or something like that. Uh, actually, yeah, he checked chat GPT and uh, it does not work. <laughs> it, it, it's not useful <laughs> for most questions here. <laughs> okay. And so, and maybe this is just, uh, okay, some important thing for, from this lecture, maybe, we, I talked about basic statistical loads and some example of dynamical systems. And dynamical systems, one, what is important is to understand in this kind of drawing figures and graphical understanding. No, not to, yeah, so solve this itself. And I talked about the concept of perfect adaptation, robustness, and then evolution, evolution, and that is, uh, fluctuation and dimension reduction. And, and today, in the latter part of the lecture, I talked about cell differentiation. So, but these, uh, yeah, I, there are some equations in, in the exam, but the uh, mostly important thing is that to uh, understand uh, yeah, some, some kind of graphically of in the figure, yeah. So that is more important. Okay. So, so that's the gift. <laughs> so everybody takes one? Okay, so, okay, so some students are not <laughs> coming here. So actually there, there is 50, so <laughs> okay. I can collect that. Tuan, you got one? You, you can get, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But just one. <laughs> yeah. So 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 that's the gift. Yeah. Okay. And now start the lecture. So maybe I need to uh, maybe more. So there was some question, and then maybe yeah, it may be a little bit confusing, so I draw this kind of picture. So this is a very robust, and it's a, by many perturbations, it can be attracted to this uh, so state, so fitted state. And this is for given genotype, so given organism, and given environment. Then 
this is stable. And in this case, the structure is attracted to many direction very strongly. And but only so within some low dimensional direction, direction, it's the yeah attraction is quite weak. So that's for given state, given genotype and given environment. And then, so by changing environmental condition and or changing by mutation or due to noise, then basically this change occurs along this direction. So this, yeah, direction of so eigen vector for this lowest eigenvalue direction. So then this change occurs along this line. And the important point is that, OK, this change along this line, but this is common due to noise, or due to noise, and by due to the change by environment, so adaptation, and due to mutation. So that's how this change by genes and change by environment are correlated. So that I discussed. And this also suggests due to noise. This is so correlated. And then that means this and this are somehow very much related. And then we can discuss so previously, we discussed VG, VIP. And that time, I discussed this variance due to variance of fitness due to genetic change or due to noise. But you can discuss variance of this change for each component. So this is each component. So if you have a 1,000 chemical components, then you can have 1,000 or something like that. But these two are both are along this line. So the change mostly occurs along this line. So this change is basically represented by the change magnitude and how much it changes here. So that means these are proportional to across all So previously, two days ago, I discussed similar things, the variance due to noise and variance due to genetic change of the fitness along that evolution course. So that's through this evolution course, so these two are proportional. But here, for given organism, yeah, and take many components, then across all components, these are proportional. And so the soul theory suggests this. And actually, so we can write down some, yeah, kind of analysis. And then we can get this simulation data. And this is, uh, I think this is due to, yeah, the simulation of a gene regulation network model that I talked about. And actually, there are many components. And so for given so noise condition or for some condition across all components, so this is the component across all components. These are roughly proportional. And also, OK, okay. in this uh, reaction network model, then across all components, again, these are proportional. So this is VGI and VIPI. I is a different component. 
So, so that's a kind of yeah, additional result. OK, so, so those who come late, there is a, a gift. So you can take one <laughs> So for those who are coming late. So yeah, if you are not taking one, you can come and take one. Yeah. <laughs> Don't hesitate. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Only one. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. So here, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I see. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so Okay, maybe. And actually yeah, there are some some Okay, this is so this means that, uh, okay, some property, so the fluctuation, so some protein abundance fluctuates, and some other different protein abundance fluctuates. And the degree of this fluctuation is different for different protein components, for instance. Then, okay, due to noise, and this is related to this yeah, variation by genes. But this, as you know, this is proportional to evolution speed. So that means if one property, so one protein fluctuates more, the abundance is fluctuates more, then it's more easily so evolvable by mutation. So, so in some sense, you can predict evolution at the present state before making some kind of mutation. If this is variable by noise more, okay, this property can be more easily evolvable. So that's uh, somewhat related to what uh, tomorrow's, uh, today's morning seminar. So, okay, that's basically the topic I could not talk yesterday. And there are some experimental supports uh, from, uh, so they measure some kind of, uh, yeah, VG, so this, Two variances uh, in some property of uh, this is uh, some kind of the experiment by some uh, fruit flies uh, flies evolution and uh, for for example weight uh, some kind of a lifespan or some other property and how it's uh, fluctuating by for the same gene flies and then they also evolve this and if how it uh, changes by mutation. And it looks like they are proportional. So, so that's, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's an additional thing uh, for the yesterday's talk. Is there some other question? Okay, then if not, I come to the Today's topic. Today's topic is here. Okay. Now I talk about uh, cell differentiation. Okay, in cell differentiation, so maybe the most important figure is this kind of Waddington's landscape, what they call, yeah, Waddington's landscape. So it's this figure. So basically, you have body, 
And then along this uh, axis, this valley is branched and becomes a kind of deeper. So this is branched and then two, two valleys here. And then finally, in this case, four valleys. And actually, this is the image of Conrad Waddington about uh, 1958. So actually, he's, uh, he's not so fam not famous compared with uh, Darwin or other people, <laughs> but he's a very genius uh, yeah, biologist, I think. And so he's a biologist and doing some experiment of this uh, development and others, uh, evolution. And he has his pic this picture. So in our multicellular organism, we have initially, so initial cell type. So this is uh, some kind of egg cell or stem cell or some what is called the embryonic stem cell, or ba basically you have stem cell. So the beginning. And then when this cell divides and divides and grows, they go to a different type. So for, for instance, they go to a kind of, for instance, neuro, neural stem cell. And then this may further bifurcate to, for example, some neuron, neuron cell, and some other cell type. Or for example, in our brain, there is a other cell called the glia cell. So basically, different cell types. So this moves to a different cell types. So you know, in our body, so skin cell, bone cell, and other many, many different, maybe 100 or more different types of cells. So that is maybe in his picture, it can be, so maybe this is, uh, for, for example, blood stem cell. Then maybe you have some kind of a, yeah, red blood cell and white blood cell or some other thing. So, so, Basically, this is an image for cell differentiation. And in this point, what is important is that these cells still have the same genes. So even though this cell is differentiated, this DNA itself is not changed. So same genes. So same genes mean that basically they can have capacity or ability to have same reaction dynamics. So in that sense, so rule for reaction dynamics This is identical. So they have, in terms, theoretical terms, we can say that they have same dynamical systems. But still, the final state, state is different, or phenotype is different. So different, different states. So he tried to understand how this occurs. And actually, he organized several yeah, seminars collecting some uh, renowned mathematicians and others. And, and basically, at that time, dynamical systems are not so much developed yet. And then 
After that, many try to understand this. OK, now we know the concept of attractor. And attractor is the final state for dynamical systems. And then, OK, I actually, yeah, Waddington wrote this kind of, yeah, figures. And this kind of figures, so maybe I'll skip this. So in the viewpoint of dynamical systems, OK, you have this kind of phenotypic or dimensional space. So if you have, for, for instance, if you have a N components, N protein expression levels, then this is the N-dimensional point. So the state is N-dimensional. And then maybe this one, this protein one and protein two and interact with each other, and you can have some dynamical system. And then according to the dynamical systems, this changes and maybe it goes there or there or something like that. So, so one general picture for this kind of Waddington's landscape is that, okay, you have many attractors in the dynamical systems, and then, yeah, each different attractor corresponds to this kind of so differentiated cell state. And that was, uh, okay, Waddington's time, he did not have a precise uh, term of uh, dynamic uh, attractor. And then later, so Stuart Kaufman did an uh, important work and to assign each, yeah, cells type as an attractor. Okay, so we are going to this more, and I think, can we erase this now? <laughs> yeah? <laughs> okay. And if uh, somebody does not have uh, this suite yet, so you can have one. Come and take one. So everybody gets that? So the basic uh, concept here is that, okay, you have dynamical systems and maybe there are several attractors here. And each attractor has a different chemical composition or different protein expression level. So this corresponds to a different cell type. Cell type A, B, or C, or something like that. So if you have a dynamical system to produce uh, maybe 100 uh, attractors, maybe this may explain our kind of multicellular organism behavior. And for, for instance, uh, so there is another example of this kind of thing. And also an example we discussed of this kind of two, two, two attractors. So I did use this kind of bistable attractor model for adaptation study. But in this case, so maybe this cell type and this cell type. And in this example, there are three types or something like that. Okay. So this may be good. And many people think that, uh, okay, there are several attractors and maybe by some kind of uh, method, and this may go to this attractor and this attractor, or maybe it goes to uh, if there is another attractor here, something like that. So, but Waddington's landscape is not just that. So that's something like that. If you have maybe three attractors, then maybe you can consider that if from this it goes here, from this it goes here, from it goes here. And this attractor may be very strongly, and this is not so much, and this is a little bit then maybe you can draw some kind of this valley. And okay, many or several people believe that, or most 
theorists or maybe half theorists or something like that understand this kind of landscape can be understood by this attractor picture. And maybe this is correct, maybe 50% correct. But the question here, so in that, in that case, so for given attractor, maybe this is a given dynamical systems, it goes to these attractor. So that can explain. But Waddington's landscape, initially, just single attractor. And then somehow magical y-axis here. <laughs> and with this magical y-axis, uh, this branches out. So, okay, to understand maybe this part, maybe this is enough. But we need to understand this direction also. So that's the question we should address. And actually, that was not discussed. We started this kind of study 30 years ago, <laughs> long time ago. But, uh, but still, not so many people are really working on this direction so much. So the question is that, so OK, maybe through the developmental process, so somehow effective dynamical systems change slowly from this to this. So then the question is that, what's this us? That's the question. And also, Conrad Waddington introduced the term homeoresis. That is not familiar to most people, I think. So, most people, so then it's, there is a famous uh, term, homeostasis, that is uh, robustness of the state. So that is well known. But he introduced the term homeoresis. And resis, in this uh, yeah, Greek term, it's a uh, Latin, I'm not so sure. It's a, uh, I, I think it's Greek. Yeah, it's a, uh, yeah, this says similar flow. So homeoresis means similar flow. So resis is flow. So, so this flow change, so this diagram change, this landscape change itself is rather robust through the developmental core. That's what Conrad Waddington so pointed out. So that's an important question. So then, OK, what's this? And so far, I think there are two possible solutions for that. OK, maybe this, uh, OK. Maybe this axis is a kind of state. So we can see, think about some kind of a low dimensional direction of this. Uh, you can consider the, this direction as x or something like that. So that is fine. And then maybe the height is that uh, how much this cell has stayed it's stable. So if you so put some kind of this, so for, for instance, okay, if you consider this direction as x, then if this is very stable, maybe this is very deep. And if this is slightly stable, maybe this is something like this is not deep. So that's this thing. So x and z is fine. So the question is why, as I said. So maybe slowly dynamical systems are changing. But what, what's that? And so this is a process of development. So in the process of development, there are slow changes also. This, these are kind of protein expression dynamics. So this is rather fast. But slow one is that kind of developmental process, the number of cell so increases and increases. So cell number increases. And then maybe these cells interact with each other. So then, so this changes, so cell number and this changes cell-cell interaction. 
cell number increases and then cell cell interaction changes. So if you consider dynamical systems for single cell behavior, and then if other cells influence, then this may slightly or drastically change this uh, so dynamical system. So that may be represented by this. So this is one possibility. And another possibility uh, that is uh, somewhat yeah, more recently discussed is that epigenetic change. And epigenetic change, so maybe, but I'm not sure it's, I can talk about this so much. But uh, anyway, so you have these pro genes, and from that proteins produced. And so basically, even if you, so these cells are divided, and all, all cells have the same gene. So the same rule of dynamics. But epigenetic change, so attach something here, and this may block the expression, or this may enhance the expression. So that slowly changes, slowly changes the rule for expression. So in some sense, there are slow changes in dynamical systems, and that leads to this. So I think basically there is no other possibility, I guess. So, so there are these two possibilities. Yeah? And so, okay. So this is the first one possibility. This is cell-cell interaction. And that we discussed uh, earlier, and originally it's uh, more than 25 years ago. And uh, then, so we did this, uh, and this is uh, the work with Chikara Furusawa, and when he was a complete theorist. <laughs> and, and another one is this kind of epigenetic change, and that's a more recent. And so first I talk about the possibility of the first. And then, okay, maybe I skip all these. So now I consider this gene regulation network model. So this is discussed uh, yes, yesterday and also in Tuan's uh, yeah, first tutorial. So we have gene regulation network model. So that has yeah, several genes and that from that proteins produced and that mutually activate or inhibit. So in that model, basically, The simplest, uh, another the example is that something like that. And if I is that for for example, given in the tutorial model, this is something like uh, some old gene minus uh, some threshold, something like that, and it, so they use some kind of f is some hyperbolic tangent function or something like that. So so this is so, and this uh, gives some kind of gene regulation network, and so activate inhibitor or something like that. And then, if you do that, okay, maybe, and starting some cell, maybe you can have this, maybe you have this, for instance, this attractor. And if you start from some initial condition, maybe only this. 
then, so we need to add something. And that is cell-cell interaction. So this is a single cell dynamics. And if you have other cell, so if you have other cells, then this is the index of alpha, index of cell. Then if you have different cell, maybe this may influence. For instance, if you have cells and some products are slightly going out, and then it may come in. So there is some kind of diffusion term from other cell to this cell, something like that. So, so you need this kind of cell-cell interaction. And then, so assume that cell device and device and device. And maybe we want to have a state that after some cell division and with this cell-cell interaction, finally, somehow, the final state have several cell states. So not here only, but uh, something like here, 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 or something like that. So if that's possible or not. And actually, so the initial version of that model was uh, studied about a long time ago, but uh, this version is a kind of later one. It's, uh, it's done by this kind of undergrad. He, he was, when he did it, he was undergraduate student. And so this Narito Suzuki checked this kind of model. And to be precise, what he did is that, okay, Maybe instead of using this, he used uh, some kind of a hill form, hill, hill function. And that is, uh, you may have heard that, uh, yeah, instead of this hyperbolic tangent ta form, maybe this kind of, uh, yeah, square form. But that, that is not so important. Anyway, this activation inhibition and then threshold type dynamics. And, okay, there are many possible, oh, okay. This is cell-cell interaction. This is the simplest one. Protein expression level, and this some proteins or protein product or something like that is so going out and coming in. So there is some kind of mean field. So you are, as you are a statistical physicist, then mostly if you have a statistical physics background, you, you know mean field model. And for simplicity, these all cells, so you have cells after maybe a, some division, and then they may go out something and they may come in, this uh, some chemical. So then the interaction is given by the mi field of this Xi for across all cells, across all cells. minus xi alpha for each. So, so you can consider this kind of uh, some, yeah, secret out and then it's uh, some kind of well mixed, uh, yeah, soup here. And then there is concentration of this protein, average concept. And for simplicity, so this is a kind of mean field. You, you can consider some spatial interaction and only to next neighbor this chemical is transferred. But, but yeah, maybe this is the first simplest one. Of course, you can consider a spatial pattern also. And, but anyway, this is mean field and this. And then, okay, now the model is clear. And then, so start from some kind of given network. And then start a single cell, and then two, four. And I assume that only one chemical is, so, transferred with each other. So only one component has this term. So that's all. And we did this kind of model. Usually, nothing interesting happens. So if we start this, so okay, after division, maybe we perturb a little bit, but still, 
if this is initially a attractor here, then even if you are part of here, they're basically two same cells. And then this diffusion term is basically does not effective to change this so much. So they try to, this is a mean field, so they go back to, towards the mean field direction. So maybe this difference changes, decreases, and they are same. And then two cells, same. Four cells, same. Eight cells, same. same. So nothing interesting happens. This occurs for many networks. But for some other networks, something different happens. And actually, Narito was so, so kind of so active student. And he checked these networks, <laughs> this number of networks. So if you consider, he, he, have, he studied only 5G model. So this is a x1, x2, x5, or, or pp1, or you, you can say protein one, protein two. So, but still, if you, you can have, there are many possibilities of okay. this uh, suppress, and this suppress, and this suppress, and this activates. So activate is uh, this red line. And so in this model, so JIJ is plus. And so inhibition in this case, so JIJ is minus one, or something like that. So you have many, many possibilities. You can produce many, many networks with the different types of this network structure. And actually, he, class, he showed that there, there are some kind of these number of networks, even though this, uh, okay, there can be many other possibilities. You can change the parameter value by each gene or something, but fixing the parameter value, and then still on this activation or inhibition, and only by that there are some kind of these numbers. And assuming that, okay, there are 10 regulatory paths. If you change the number of regulatory paths, there are more. But he, he fixed it, and then there are these possibilities. And he checked all of these. And if there are cases that this kind of differentiation occurs, and actually there are, okay, he checked these, okay, these models, and then he checked all of these, okay. Okay, there are, okay, two possibilities. One is that, okay, this is the time course, and we plot only, for, for, for instance, x1, and x1 value. And then, at this event, cell division occurs. And then, so actually, type, so first cell and second cell becomes a different value, so large or small value. And then, later, it's basically the same. So in this case, so finally, you have two cell types. So initially, this one, and then this two. Okay, we can have these two, two, two cell types. So that's one example. And other case is that maybe this is a little bit similar to this, but initially oscillating, and then again two types after some division, and then two types. Okay, that's maybe interesting, and I can, we can understand it. if you know Turing, Turing bifurcation, Turing pattern, or Turing mechanism, then we, we can understand this so by extending this idea of Turing. But what is more important here is that this next type. Okay, here there is one oscillation, and then different type appears. And then later, this type switches to this type again and repeats this. Actually, I have a, so okay, okay this, this is an example. So, okay, there was kind of useful <laughs> video, but uh, actually somehow, yeah, I cannot use the video here. So if you, probably it's still there with the, if you can use YouTube and search with this name, maybe 
So I think this, uh, yeah, video can be uploaded. I, I'm not sure. Can somebody check? <laughs> but anyway, yeah, in this case, what is seen here is that something like this. It's uh, still on the YouTube? Yeah. OK. Yeah. So what is seen here is that initial cell type, oscillation state, and then this is an attractor. This is an attractor as a single cell. So this is an attractor. And the cell divides into two. And then maybe still, maybe you have this. And, and then maybe after division, the phase of oscillation is not identical, becomes a different. So due to this cell-cell interaction. So cell-cell interaction, this. Changes. So it's uh, something like oscillate like this. And then, so after this thing occurs, then maybe this oscillation becomes a little bit different. And maybe one guy oscillates in the outside, and the other guy kind of oscillates more inside. So this kind of separation occurs due to this cell cell interaction. So this interaction is just simple, this diffusion type form. And then, so after cell number increases, then this cell is kicked away here. And the other cell type remains. And then furthermore, the further division occurs, then actually when this division occurs, cell division occurs, this cell type remains. But this cell type, oscillating one, remains either here, switches here. So that kind of thing happens here. And this is important because I said that stem cell, initially stem cell. The important thing of stem cell can produce a different type of cell. So may, maybe the original stem cell, so blood stem cell can produce any different type of blood cell. But for, for example, red blood cell, then there is no more. And then other, other white blood cell, amoeba cell or something like that, it can produce only itself. So, in this case, so this cell type, so differentiated cell type, they can produce only itself. And this can produce itself or differentiate, depending on some situation. So, but they uh, have all same dynamical systems, and by some kind of cell-cell interaction, this goes here or here. So this is biologically known result. And OK, assuming that initially oscillating state, and then by cell-cell interaction, this property appears. So, so that's the observation here. And actually, Yes. Yeah. Um, in so when we were studying the toggle switch model, uh, you showed us that uh, unless we have some stochasticity, some uh, some external noise, the system doesn't spontaneously go into both the fixed uh -huh. points. Uh, you, you mean? Switch it between yeah, two between by the noise. Yes. Yeah. Um, so this model, uh, the equations that you showed for us, 
looks essentially deterministic, right? Essentially were, were deterministic. Any... Or maybe when it's divided, maybe slightly part of the, but it's uh, basically deterministic, yeah. But uh, without any stochasticity, it is able to go into these three different fixed points. Yeah. So that is why this, if two cells are identical state, is not stable. So, of course, as a dynamical system, if it's completely the same, so maybe it follows the same rule. But if it's only slightly changed, then this kind of homogeneous state is unstable dynamically. And then this difference emphasizes, so amplified. And then finally it goes to here and here. Yeah. So in this case, so initially, so maybe if it's completely the same, they oscillate completely synchrony. Then if two cells completely oscillate synchrony, then something like that. Then there is no way to differentiate. But actually this kind of complete synchrony state is unstable. So even if you have slight perturbation here to here, then this may go here, and finally, some difference here, and oscillate in a different way. So due to this cell-cell interaction and internal dynamics. Yeah, yes. So these perturbations are a part of the Yeah, model, perturbation or? is a, a necessary, because when this cell is divided, divided it cannot be completely the same. Basically, it's quite similar, but maybe there is a slight difference between this protein concentration between the two cells. Yeah, and but any yeah. small perturbation is amplified. Yes, but uh, that's biologically speaking, but in Bio the yeah. model... So in the model, so when I, this, these cells are divided, so X1 alpha cell and X divided, maybe this... Uh, some, some, something like uh, some value, so d slight difference. So one, one is a little bit larger and the other is... Uh, so is it, it, it's like sensitivity to initial conditions? Yeah, it's a, yeah, sensitivity to initial conditions. So this is uh, amplified. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So it's a, it's a discussion using some kind of, yeah, dynamical systems plus in interacting dynamical systems. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Wait a minute. So in that any of the, let's say the blue case there in the in the last one. Yeah. You have a lot of cells uh, yeah. going around the yeah. same attractor or the, but they Basically, are Basically this these there are roughly speaking two attractors. Okay. But it's a it's, it's a little bit tricky because uh, so when as a dynamical system if you have for, for instance 32 dynamical systems uh, 32 cells then then that means if you have five components here and if you have 32 cell then originally this is 100 yeah 60 dynamical systems dimensional dynamical system but if these are completely the same, they basically just five. And so just focusing on this five-dimensional dynamical systems, and then the other effect, mean field effect, can be a kind of a additional term for this. So, so basically, there are some yeah, arguments here. Yeah, so that is a little bit mathematical, but uh, yeah. If you have this kind of dynamical systems, Okay, if this is diffusion term is, so if these cells are identical, basically same dynamical system. But if there is this term, so, and if these cells are not identical, then for instance, one, okay, if you have two cell types, and then one is larger and one is smaller, then these dynamical systems between different type of, this is one, okay, a little bit confusing. This is one and two are different cell types. And then, okay, we have this 
coupled five versus five and coupled dynamical system. So, so that's a little bit, uh, yeah, for focusing on this five dimensional dynamical system and then the other interaction is fixed, then it's uh, just a usual attractor here. But since there is another term and this another cell type, interaction term is determined self-consistently because this is mean field. So if you have this cell type and this other cell type, and this influence this here, and the other cell type, maybe this is basically oscillatory, and then basically, yeah, if this effect is not included, then it's just a oscillating state. Maybe the phase of oscillation is different, but it's same on the limit cycle, so same at attractor. Yeah, but then with this, okay, maybe this stability is shifted. And so you, due to the effect of this, maybe this is somewhat changes, and then maybe some goes out. That's, yeah. So it's a little bit, uh, yeah, a little bit more <laughs> complicated than usual dynamical system, yeah. but. But you do not need to discuss this. So if you have 32 cells, maybe you don't need completely this dynamical, this dimensional dynamical system. Basically, this set of dynamical systems versus the other one. And then the interaction is determined self-consistently. Yeah. Yes. No? No. No. Tuan? You are not? Oh, OK. Yeah. Yeah, I so see. My question is about first you start with the mean field description. Yeah. So the diffusion term yeah. is uh, identical for yeah, every cell type. But, but if the, the it's question different, is, yeah? if it's different, okay, it's different. This, uh, yeah, two, two. And then the question is that this uh, completely homogeneous state is stable or not. And if it's not stable, maybe any small perturbation destabilizes the homogeneity. Yeah. And then it goes to this two different states. But yeah. then it can be possible that if you specify pairwise interaction between cell alpha and cell beta. Yeah. Uh, we, we can discuss this kind of, uh, yeah, coupled, yeah, two dynamical systems. Yeah, if you have two, two types, yeah. Then we can discuss the state of this, okay. yeah. Yeah. One more question. Yeah. Uh, probably it's more of a clarifi clarification. How do we define the initial conditions of these systems? Okay, initial condition actually in this model. So I, I take just <laughs> initially some some value, and actually initially there is in this simple case, initially there is just single attractor. So everything fine initially independent on initial condition. Initially it goes to this kind of oscillating limit cycle state. So initially, only one oscillating attractor, the yeah, limit cycle attractor. Yeah. OK. So, so maybe that is uh, relevant to, OK, to explain this kind of differentiation from stem cell, and then OK, in this case, only one differentiation from this. Uh, OK, maybe this is a kind of this shallow one is maybe oscillating one. And then you can go to this differentiated state. So that is, and also, yeah. Yeah, and then from this oscillatory one, so differentiate. And so far we have checked many, many cases. And that kind of robust differentiation, so this stem cell and this can produce itself and or differentiate. That is observed only if we have 
some kind of initially oscillatory state. Yeah. Theta, right? The threshold. No, no. Theta threshold is fixed here. So what is effective? Uh, effective bifurcation? Part bifurcation parameter is that if you have two cell types, then the fraction of each cell type. Okay. So if you have maybe thirty-two cells, and then there are, and if you have only two types, there may be more more types, but consider the simplicity, only two types. And then, okay, this, this type of cell, one type of cell, and the other type of cell. And the fraction of this number fraction, of this okay, fraction of N, this, okay, the fraction of N1 plus N2. So this is the fraction of this cell type. And the other cell type, row two. So that is a kind of effective bifurcation parameter. And important thing is that, okay, this means that if you put all 32 cells this attractor, then this is no longer stable. And some go there. And so, so there is uh, some range. So, but uh, maybe if this is just 20%, 30%, this can remain. So after, if, as long as this number of fraction is, uh, for instance, uh, 60%, less than 60%, it can reproduce here. But if this ratio goes beyond 60%, for instance, it switches here. And because this interaction depends on that fraction, because this is just interaction to others. So if there are too much of these cell types, then this becomes unstable to switch to here. So, so this is uh, somehow a mechanism. So, so basically, cell-cell ch interaction changes the effective bifurcation parameter and leads to different cell states. So there is a good point for here, because that means Okay, if you have too many cell types, that is unstable. And if you have less number of cell types, it can reproduce more. So the fraction of this row one versus row two, this remains within some range. And actually in this example, with this mechanism, starting from a single cell, and the fraction of one type of cell, and we repeat many several experiment simulations, then always it remains around some value. Because this is only, in that case only, this is stable. But if you don't have any such mechanism, and just two attractors, and just switch by noise, then depending on the case, maybe sometimes, 100% of one, and sometimes, uh, yeah, just 20% of one or something like that. So it, the cell type number can be anything. But in this case, so cell type number is within some range. And so that means some kind of robustness of cell type number so that is important for our multicell organism because we need so different cell types and these numbers should be you know, if you have only too much skin cells and no bone cells then then it's not good at all so the fraction should be within some range and of course in the other, in our case, was we, we need to consider spatial organization also, but that, that's a, another yeah, factor. But anyway, this mechanism explains robustness of cell type number. So, so that's this relevance of this oscillation induced plus interaction mechanism. Okay, and 
Okay, we can discuss a little bit more in dynam as a dynamical systems. I'm not sure if it's, uh, yeah. I, I, I'm not sure. If you are really interested in, you can read some other slides and uh, also check, yeah, these original papers or something. But uh, the minimal case we discussed is that this kind of, okay, yeah, this kind of, this example. And so there are two genes, and X activates the expression of Y, and activates itself, and Y suppresses this. So this is activation, and this is suppression, inhibition, inhibition. So the minimal case is these two, just the two genes. And then we can write down just the differential equation of two variables. And, but as I said, that it's, it is more important to understand it graphically. And in this case, so actually, so for this model, nucleine of this is something like this. And something like this. And in this case, so there are fixed points here, but uh, from the analysis of this flow, this is unstable. And so the f attractor here is something, this attractor here. Limit cycle attractor. Oscillation state, oscillation state. So in this case, so X goes up, goes down, Y goes up and goes down. And this is single cell. And if you have more cells than one cell and maybe the other cell, and then due to this difference in Y value, so for, for instance, if Y is, so if you have X and Y and then you have this, and due to the difference, this, each cell state is shifting. And this is basically adding this term. So adding this term means one, for one cell, nucleine, this goes up. And for the other cell type, this goes up. So that means if it goes down, the nucleine for this, something like that. And then you can show this is a stable point. And then you can get a fixed point, stable state that was discussed here. And the other, other one is going up so that this state remains to be an attractor. So that's a little bit more details in dynamical systems. So if you are interested in dynamical systems, you can go onto that kind of thing. Okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. So in terms of robustness of cell type number, how can we figure out, discover the term, the fractions, the critical fractions? Okay, so this is in this simulation. So we have, so uh, after, for, for instance, 32 cell number, so 32 cells, you can check that, okay, this is uh, this state or this remaining oscillating state. So we, we can check that. This is simulation, so we can check that. But of course, in reality, we can check by, of course, trunk split form analysis or something like that. But in that case, so one needs to check each single cell. Yeah, yeah. So, so anyway, this is oscillation-induced robust differentiation mechanism. Yeah. Yes. So you have to start from an oscillation, and then you might have a fixed point if the bifurcation yeah. goes right. Yeah. And what if you don't start with an oscillation? You so can you? In, if you have just single attractor, fixed point attractor, mm -hmm. then even if you increase the number, basically 
this does not change anything. So nothing happens. Yeah. Yeah. OK. Yeah. That's an example by oscillation induced. So maybe, yeah, we can extend this idea to make a more, many more cell types. And actually, this kind of thing was first, uh, yeah, discussed by, so, the model with Chikara Furusawa, and we have some kind of oscillatory state, and then they are, in this case, so a little bit more complex, and then you can have two types of small oscillation, and then finally it goes to a fixed point state. So then we can explain this kind of hierarchical yeah, branching of this, uh, yeah, what Waddington, yeah, discussed. And also, the important thing is the number ratio of each cell type is within some range. So we have robustness to the, of the cell type number. So both robustness as a cell ensemble level, and also these are attractors, so this is also robust to, as a single cell level. So that is achieved by maybe some kind of self-consistent. Yeah, so I, I, I discussed some kind of consistency between micro and macro is important. And so this is consistency between cellular dynamics versus consistency as an ensemble of cells. And ensemble of cells comes in from this kind of cell-cell interaction. Okay, so actually this was first discussed uh, something 20 years ago with Chikara Furusawa. And okay. Is that real in <laughs> experiment? We are not completely sure. And, but there are some support, probably support. And so initially, this kind of so stem cell, and stem cell can produce different type of cells, and that is also called pluripotency or multipotency. So you can produce many different cell types. Yeah, so this stem cell has this nature. And so our theory says, we are not completely sure, but this is a oscillatory. And then it's a, so each cellular state changes in time. So in time, and then if you take many cells, maybe some cells here, some cells here, some cells here. So if you take this kind of pluripotent cells, maybe cellular state is, uh, changes to much degree, so that it, for some, so if you take a snapshot of each cell type, this and this. And that is also observed, this kind of diverse expressed, so diverse, or cell-cell variation. So actually, in this uh, example, so for the same stem cell, pluripotent cell, this expression, some protein, differs by cells for these differentiated uh, pluripotent cell. And they, this is, in this case, so the protein concentration is measured by the, some kind of fluorescence. And so maybe this, this type and this type and this is quite different. So, but it's a, so same, same type of this kind of pluripotent stem cell. And when it's differentiated, differentiated means it goes to a kind of fixed, more, more this kind of state. Then, so from stem cell to differentiated cell type, then this kind of heterogeneity is lost. So that's experimental observation. So maybe that is consistent. But maybe the best confirmation would be to check this oscillation itself. Okay, if a stem cell or some protein shows oscillation, and then when it's differentiated, this oscillation disappears. Maybe that is, okay, maybe confirmation. And actually, there are some experiments that this is by Kageyama group, and they found that, that some kind of a 
protein called HES1. So the name is not important, but this is, this is believed to be important for some kind of pluripotency. So to produce this kind of pluripotent state. And this protein level is changing in time. So this is time. And I think this is uh, maybe four hour oscillation or something like that. And what is further interesting is that when this cell, so stem cell, and differentiated, fixed to, to some, to go to some other differentiated state, then this oscillation is lost. So in that sense, this is consistent with this theory. But, but biology, in biological examples, is okay. This is just one example, and maybe in a different stem cell, maybe this uh, may be different, so always biologists ask, okay, maybe this is just one example, okay. Maybe the other example may be different, so we are not sure if that this is always true or not. Okay, at least for this case, it's fine. Yeah. And then, okay. Okay, in this case, so after this is fixed, I said, so okay. So initial cell type produce many different cell types. So stem cell can produce a different cell type. This one into eight. So this is stem cell and pluripotent. And but once this is fixed here. So this is, it can go from here, but this can produce itself because this oscillation is already lost here in this model. So it cannot produce other cell types. This can produce other cell types. Maybe if you have some other oscillation, maybe it can produce this type, this type, this type, and fixed. And we fixed, there is no way to recover in this case. And that is called so irreversible loss of pluripotency. And so initial cell types, so embryonic stem cell, what they called, or some other original cell type. And then maybe if we have skin cell, then skin cell can produce only skin cell. That's normal developmental process. And that is called irreversible differentiation process. And maybe that is important to have robustness in development because robustness and irreversibility is something that two faces of the coin, two sides of the coin. So, but as long as this is dynamical systems, maybe if we externally control the state, it may be possible to come back. Of course, this does not occur in the normal developmental course, but maybe if this is just loss of oscillation, maybe if you somehow enhance this state or this state or adding two variables here, then you may go to this state. That could be possible. So that suggests that this, uh, for example, expressing uh, some several genes compulsively in differentiated cell types. The original, yeah, pluripotency, multipotency, to have many possible capacity to make many different cell types, may be regained. That's we discussed over about 2001. And after five years, so there is a famous study, okay, okay, by Yamanaka, and that is in, called induced pluripotent stem cell. And what he did is that express, overexpress several genes, for example, taking skin cell, and externally overexpress several genes. Then he can regain this kind of initial state. And that discovery was uh, quite 
important in biology or medicine, and he got the Nobel Prize after, I think, after five or six years, or this is quite fast. And so, so unfortunately, he did not read our paper. <laughs> So he did his experiment by himself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but maybe we think that maybe this is <laughs> kind of, yeah, direction of what we kind of predicted. <laughs> yeah. So, so that's a, a story of this kind of cell differentiation. Okay. Maybe for physicists, it's interesting because, because this is a kind of irreversibility irreversible differentiation. So th in the normal course, this goes to this, from this to this, but not from this to this. But is there a way to somehow, by external control, from this to this? So this is somehow similar to Maxwell demo <laughs> or something like that. So <laughs> usually, so in one direction, but externally doing that, we can go back to this state or not. So that's so theoretical, yeah, study for this. And actually, this is not the end of story, and actually we need to, yeah, Tuan discussed that, uh, okay, we, could you change it over threshold or something? And so as another uh, uh, possibility, this why this directional change may be related to kind of epigenetic change. And epigenetic change is that, I, as I said, that some kind of masking or enhancing the expression of some genes. And I'm sure I, I don't have time to go into details, but for a sim simple model, what we did is that, so this is, the model of this gene expression of this threshold, and as Tuan discussed, and this theta threshold is usually given for dynamical system. But assume that this threshold is slowly changing as a result of expression. And actually, usually if one gene is expressed, then later it's become more easily expressed. So if X is expressed, then the threshold for this expression decreases, or and vice versa. If this is not expressed, then the threshold increases. So then this theta change may be considered as a slow change, and that corresponds to yeah, this direction. So with this time span, theta changes. So for given theta, this is dynamical system here, and this dynamical system here. And with this slow change, this, yeah, dynamical system changes because you, if you change this value, then probably you may have more attractors or less attractors or something like that. And so that's another possibility. And in this case, so theta should be slowly changed. And, and in relationship with it, X. So we discuss this kind of model. And actually, yeah, this was discussed by, and in this case again, initially we have just the fixed point. Uh, oh no, okay. Initially, starting from oscillatory state. Then finally, it's fixed to several fixed point states. And in this case, we are not discussing introducing interaction, cell-cell interaction, just by single cell. But you can produce yeah, several cell states. And then we can discuss that somehow this kind of how with this time and initially this landscape. And then there are more deeper landscapes. So initially, this state is oscillatory. And then with this change of theta, there you have this kind of, and then, so in this case, this axis is theta change. So that's another possibility. And in reality, I think both exist, and uh, yeah, we, 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 
we also did some modeling to include both, but uh, that is a little bit more, yeah, too much. Actually, so this Waddington's landscape, so that was, I think initially only theorists are uh, interested in that. But actually this picture is now used in, actually this is the Yamanaka's paper or Yamanaka's Nobel lecture paper or something like that. That is, yeah, written there. And so what he said is that, okay, we have this in the normal course, but he found a way to go to here. So, so that's another question, and, uh, the, and we discuss this kind of possibility using this uh, kind of overexpressing few genes and regain this oscillatory state. And actually, even by including this kind of uh, theta change of this express mo epigenetic modification change, we can consider how this process occurs. And if you are interested in, maybe you can the paper by Matsushita and myself. That's a, as a dynamical system, it's quite interesting, but uh, maybe this is too much. And, and actually, yeah, this is more realistic uh, gene regulation network uh, extracted from uh, real experiment. And by using that, okay, for some parameter region, we can have oscillation, and then kind of this kind of differentiation and regain by expressing few, few genes. But the difficulty here is that, okay, maybe they discuss maybe, actually the reality, mm -hmm. you have my, my many more genes. And this, these are examples that they believe that these genes are important and this uh, expression, the activation inhibition relationship extracted from expression, uh, experiment. Still, we do not know the parameter for this model. And if it's oscillator or not, it, de it depends on parameter. So, so in that sense, so it's still, yeah, difficult to completely confirm the, this kind of theory yet. Okay, so, okay, maybe I have to close this part. And unfortunately, yeah. There should be, this is eighth lecture. <laughs> and there is ninth lecture, but uh, maybe I don't have time to, yeah, go into this. But uh, yeah, if you are interested, yeah, you can see the slides or, or if, you, if you are interested, you can come to discuss with me and uh, yeah. Actually this memory part is, uh, if you are interested in glass theory in physics, that is related. And another topic we have not discussed today, or this lecture, okay, yeah. <laughs> don't, don't ask about so, the glass. No, I have a question <laughs> about the previous part. Yeah. So is there any estimation about, when, when you, when you show the Waddington landscape for yeah. development, you show this beautiful picture yeah. with uh, from the zygote to, to, uh, to yeah. potent to the yeah. unipotent. Yeah? Yeah. You go down. Is there any measurement, any knowledge about, I mean, is that's intended to show energy, energy or free energy or something. Yeah. Is there any measurement of the any energy? No measurement of energy. Nothing. And then other or possibilities I mean, that uh, maybe how stable it is each state. So this may be, so if you consider put some noise here, and then maybe if you put some noise here, then probably, so for the Fokker-Planck equation, maybe this gives some kind of potential. And then maybe for simple 2G model or 3G model, they did some kind of this study. But this is purely, yeah, theoretical. No, no experimental confirmation of this, yeah. But this is landscape intended. Itself, so the, there, there is no direct measurement of height. But the Waddington landscape, originally as proposed by Waddington, yeah. 
was supposed to be energy. I mean, uh, that's sure. In, I'm not, not sure if it's that. energy or not. It's a kind of, uh, some kind of uh, prepotency or changeability or plasticity or some. So it's uh, somehow ma va vague. It's yeah. vague, okay. Yeah. Okay, this may be related to energy in the sense of physics, but nobody knows. Nobody knows. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And even it's not known if it is flat, if it is very steep, nothing. Yeah. It's it a, could be a landscape like that or could be very flat. So initially it may be flat and then like, yeah, finally it's okay. very become. And actually we did some, in some study we discussed that maybe this can, this kind of landscape can be extracted from some experiment. But that's still not, uh, yeah, energy. It's just a kind of a, how it can be changed from here to here. It, it's difficult to change from here to here, or it's difficult to change from here to here. Okay. Yeah. Thank yes. you. In the machinery needed for the expression of some of the genes, Maybe some kind of mapping in the ATP or in yeah, the, yeah. because I don't know, it's, <laughs> this, it's a very... Yeah, maybe this might be possible, but uh, anyway, nobody has done that. No, yet. no, I yeah. guess not. It's not yeah, that's it. Maybe if, no, so far, I very, don't have the time. very few physicists are working on this kind of, yeah, stem cell or this kind of cell differentiation. So if more physicists are working on that, maybe, yeah, this may be possible. Yeah. And... Okay, so, and also, so in this lecture, so mostly I talk about the consistency of molecular level and cell level. And today I talked about this consistency between cell and versus multicell organism level. Of course, another possibility, important higher level in biology is that ecosystem. And so there are several species existing, and then the number of diverse diversity or the number of each species should be robust or something like that. And actually, this is the ex expert is Jacopo, I think, he, he, but he's not here. <laughs> so, so, and I think this kind of a, yeah, consistency between these levels are also important. I discussed a little bit something on this, but I don't have time. Okay, so, so basically, yeah, I start from originally from complex system, high dimensional dynamical systems. Now I'm working on universal biology. And the earlier is maybe you can see some of this the lecture in discussion here, but most part are in this book. Unfortunately, this is still in Japanese. Translation is in progress. So if you are really interested in, I can give you some kind of translation. And, but, but you need to then correct my English. <laughs> okay, and yeah, that's all. Okay, thank you. If somebody does not get one, you can get one. <laughs> okay, thanks. <laughs> oh, you can have one. You are not a student, but you can have one. Oh, only one. Only one? Only one. <laughs> yeah, you can have. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>